If you would like your ICO reviewed, please contact us for our competitive packages. Now, we do not review every single platform that comes our way, only the top tier ICOs that have passed an extensive qualifying process, businesses that we're actually considering investing in ourselves. Having said that, with any investment, you always have a potential to lose, so you must only ever invest in what you can afford to lose. Our contact details in the description below. And please remember, we are not a financial institution. What you hear expressed here is our opinion only. The healthcare industry is one that affects all of us, whether you're old or young, rich or poor, and no matter what country you call home, at some point in your life, you will need the services of a medical professional. Now, the medical industry is seeing higher costs year on year, even in the developed world where access is actually taking longer and longer for each individual. There's also the issue at the speed of which medical technology is being developed and the roadblocks prohibiting this technology from helping those in need. And of course, there's the issue of privacy, as it's harder and harder to keep our personal information private it, not just in the medical industry, but in many industries across the board. But what if there are one blockchain solution that could aid with all of these issues? Welcome to Medico Health. So before we jump into all the interesting ways in which medical health seeks to improve things in the world of medicine, let's first get a general idea of the healthcare industry globally. Now, global healthcare costs continue to increase. Overall healthcare spending is expected to grow from seven trillion US dollars in 2015 to almost nine trillion by 2020, with longer term projections for seeing a further increase to more than 18 trillion by 2024. So far as the breakdown by region, North America accounts for almost 50% of the global expenditure. In the USA, 16.9% of the country's GDP in 2016 was represented by health costs. Turkey, on the other hand, had 5% of its GDP go to healthcare and 11.5% in Switzerland. One of the key reasons that expenditures are rising is that in developed countries, there's an increasing aging trend adding to the demand for healthcare services. Now, medical technology is developing rapidly, bringing new treatment opportunities and further adding to overall complexity of this ecosystem. The elderly population, which is represented by folks over 65 years of age, is anticipated to increase by 8% from 559 million in 2015 to 604 million by 2020. But along with an aging population, we also have financial inefficiencies, particularly regulatory burdens and operational difficulties, including infrastructure and lack of talent, which are also issues that are driving the costs. Growing healthcare needs are not compensated by the increased expenditure. Even developed countries are experiencing diminishing healthcare service access. Now, healthcare providers' skills and experience are not the only factor when looking at treatment quality, as they have been complemented by accessibility, fast availability, and the ability to provide the best possible care to the patient. According to Merritt Hawkins, it took 24 days for a patient to make their first appointment with a physician in the 15 large urban areas in the USA. If we look across the pond in the UK, GP appointment waiting times are expected to approach three weeks. Because of this, many individuals are increasingly using search engines to gather information that would normally be provided by a GP or physician. This kind of action may carry many risks and can add to delays to treatments of serious conditions. Increasing the number of care workers may seem like a logical solution. One example of this is the Japanese government plans to train an additional 250,000 care workers in an attempt to satisfy the demand for elder care by 2020. Now we're going to have to wait and see whether this number of health care workers can start and catch up to the actual needs. Needs, but this is only a partial solution of a very complex problem, and technology, especially telemedicine and mobile health, could help with these issues in a major way. Access to healthcare providers varies across the planet. According to the European Union survey statistics on income and living conditions, approximately 3% of the population on average across Europe reported unmet needs for healthcare due to cost and waiting lists in 2013. Based on data from the National Health Service in the UK, the number of patients who had been admitted to hospital had risen to its highest level in Seven years. Almost 40,000 admitted patients did not start consultant-led treatment within 18 weeks of referral. In Canada, specialist physicians reported a median waiting time of 21.2 weeks between referral from a general practitioner and the receipt of treatment, longer than the wait time of 20 weeks reported in 2016. This represents a 128% increase from 1993 when it was just 9.3 weeks for this waiting time. Due to limited and sometimes no availability of physician appointments, patients are searching 
searching online to take control of their health. The research conducted for the UK Digital Health Report that is based on 61 million Google searches in a survey of 1,013 adults found that one of every five people decided to diagnose themselves online with search engines when feeling unwell or experiencing any kind of symptoms. 11% said this was because they were unable to secure an appointment with a doctor, while another 10.8% said that Google was the best option because their GP wasn't available in a timely manner. On the other hand, it's estimated that between 11 and 17% of the population are willing to pay an extra charge for private health care, whether to avoid long wait times, to access new medical treatment and technology, or to avoid the potential risk of infections in public sector hospitals. Now, as we touched on earlier in the video, the healthcare industry is encountering many challenges and technology-enabled care has become a key part of the solution. Although health systems are still a highly labor-intensive business sector, there has still been sizable growth of information and communications technology in healthcare over the last few years. The rise in value of information technology in the healthcare system is recognized by many consumers as well as industry insiders. More and more people are seeing the benefits of online and mobile information exchange with their health provider. Mobile technology is providing patients with greater control over how their personal information is used, where it can be stored, and ultimately who can have access to it. It provides a powerful tool for patients to become an active partner in their health. According to an American National Survey in 2014, people with online access to their medical data are more motivated to improve their health. 62% of the respondents in Delatai's 2015 survey of U.S. healthcare, consumers feel more comfortable consulting with a provider via email or phone. 52% of the consumers would like access to technology that enables review of quality and satisfaction rankings. And 36% of the consumers have no concerns about using mobile technology to pay their medical bills. And it is important to note that 23% have also done it in the past year. Quoting from the good people over at Medico Health, the Medico Health platform will empower patients with information necessary to become an active partner in their health care. Patients will have better connections with providers, which will enable them to bolster engagement with more informed decisions and ultimately enhance the quality of their health care. Medico Health seeks to build a platform that will integrate solutions that are serving mobile health as well as the telemedicine market. Also, they seek to provide safe storage with secure access management of individual health information which should be enabled with the perspective of full integration of electronic health records on the medical health platform. Taking a look at the mobile health market, which has changed a great deal due to changes in technology, as of 2017, 3.4 billion people worldwide owned a smartphone. Patients and providers alike search for information online using social media as a platform to exchange experiences, connecting via apps or other internet connections. Half of mobile users now actively use technology and apps to manage their health and well-being on a day-to-day -day basis, identifying treatment options or to help diagnose illnesses. The mobile health market value was at about $2.4 billion in 2013, and it's forecast to reach $21.5 billion by 2018, which gives us a compound annual growth rate of 54.9%, which is monumental in any business or industry. Now, there are approximately 97,000 M Health apps on the market, among of which 70% focus on consumer wellness and fitness, but only 30% of the apps target health professionals, covering patient consultation, pharmaceutical information, and other related concerns. Moving on to the telemedicine market, which has the potential to vastly improve physician access by eliminating travel barriers and adding the flexibility and capacity of specific healthcare services. The World Health Organization adopted a broad description of telemedicine, which is as follows. The delivery of healthcare services where distance is a critical factor by all healthcare professionals using information and communication technologies for the exchange of valid information for diagnosis, treatment and prevention of disease and injuries, research and evaluation and for the continuing education of health care providers, all in the interest of advancing the health of individuals and their communities. The telemedicine market value was estimated at 18 billion in 2015 and is expected to increase over 40 billion in 2021. But despite the market value and the urgent need for healthcare transformation, telemedicine continues to be hindered by legal and technological obstacles. The main obstacles that are being faced by the telemedicine market are as follows. 
An absence of an international legal framework to allow healthcare professionals to deliver services in different jurisdictions and countries, a lack of policies that govern patient privacy and confidentiality regarding data transfer and patient data storage, sharing between health professionals and jurisdictions, health professionals' authentication, license validity information, and risk of medical liability for health professionals offering telemedicine services. Now with all of these in view, let's take a quick peek over at the Medical Health White Paper. Using blockchain technology has a potential to effectively address the majority of the above mentioned obstacles. Medical Health Platform can and will help close the gap in physician access globally. It's important to keep in view that useful and secure electronic access to health information is a strong catalyst for engaging patients and families in their own health care. Now, patients who use online access tend to report health issues more frequently, which has a substantial positive impact on the knowledge of their health and desire to do something to improve their health. This is also supported by the survey results of a Harris poll, which was conducted for the National Partnership for Women and Families in 2014. As seen on the image on your screen, it can be inferred that online access has a positive impact on a wide range of activities that are essential to better care and better health. Large quantities of primary data concerning the health and lifestyles of individuals can be found in the form of electronic health records, electronic medical records, personnel health records, insurance claims, and other medical databases. Now, personnel records gathered by mobile app creators and or manufacturers of portable devices are increasing on a regular basis. Electronic health records typically reflect the partial view of the healthcare provider without the ability for patients to control or interact with their personal data. The health data currently under patient's control is more appropriately addressed as personal health records. A personal health record is a record controlled by the individual and may include health information from a variety of sources, including but not exclusive to multiple healthcare providers and the actual patients themselves. Medical Health is a platform aims to integrate solutions that will prove to be operational focusing on first ensuring the most secure, decentralized, and anonymous data repository. The system will enable the storage of personal health records in the form of available to patients that will be time limited by the choice of the patient or patients and will help physicians evaluate patient conditions. Now, Medical Health is looking to provide anonymous and secure communication with physicians. Separation of personal data from any health information stored in the distributed data repository will be recommended to patients using the Medical Health platform. Platform. By the patient's choice, the protected health information will be saved into the repository. Protected health information includes any demographic information that can be used to identify a patient, like a name, date of birth, address, social security number, and general health care information. It is very important that the solution complies with the existing privacy regulatory landscape that addresses personal data. Access to this personal information is restricted in most countries by special laws, so integration and use of socially significant goals is difficult. Data remains secure during storage and processing. Data can be queried but only by queries that are permissioned by digital identity credentials for specific data operations defined by legally binding smart contracts and for a limited time. Incorporated privacy maximizing algorithms will maximize security for the data processing in compliance with regulatory demands. Now, Medico Health's vision is to integrate industry leading solutions that will be operational first rather than building from scratch, which is especially important in the connection to electronic health records integration. Looking globally, electronic health records integration into multiple computer systems and connectivity can present a big challenge. Processing and analysis of clinical data is also complicated by the existence of multiple data standards. A limited number of major healthcare IT projects manage to achieve medical data to be integrated into multiple systems. In healthcare informatics, there are numerous standards developing organizations and in the process of developing a working solution. This means building upon many already existing existing standards. Clinical information in the world of health records is very complex, but complexity and ambiguity in specification creates errors, which requires multi-party consensus and demands change management. There is a graphic on your screen now that shows the possibilities regarding electronic health records integration. 
complexity of the privacy regulatory landscape needs a thorough and diligent approach reviewing the compliance for each market that will be encountered. The chosen solution for the data storage in the central location will enable compliance with applicable personal data protection laws and regulations, such as HIPPA and GDPR. Specific requirements of individual jurisdictions will be addressed prior to enabling of medical health services. The patient will maintain control over which physician can access their medical data and to what extent. As blockchain technology is developing fast and it is ahead of formal guidance and regulation, the developments on the regulatory landscape should be closely followed. Now that we have a general understanding of the issues that face the medical industry, let's take a look at how the people over at Medico Health seek to change things for the better. Their main objective is to tackle one very important issue, which is the speedy, affordable, and reliable consultation about a patient's condition from a physician or specialist of their choosing. The patient-physician system will allow anonymous questions to physicians, fast transition comments, telemedicine integration in line with applicable local legislation, booking physical appointments, Appointments, anonymous data storage and access approval, secure and anonymous payment module, physician identity, and also license validity checks. Then we have the physician-to-physician -physician system, which will allow physician-to-physician -physician online consultations, anonymous data storage and access approval, secure and anonymous payment modules, and then physician identity and license validity checks. The Medico Health Platform aims to allow for a fully anonymous, safe, and efficient communication with the world's leading physicians. Physician credentials, together with license validity information, are updated in decentralized database. Patient data will be anonymously stored and accessed only by selected physicians for a limited time, whereas patients will maintain full control over which physician or physicians can access their medical data. And to what extent? So far as payments go, they are fully tokenized and anonymous and will be performed on the blockchain. Tokens run the system and compensate the service provider, platform, underlying protocol, and blockchain layer use. Medical Health has stated that they will implement strong privacy and security arrangements. Patients will be in control of their own data, and it will be up to them to grant access to a physician while still maintaining the right of not to share while securing and limiting the period when data can be seen. So just to break it down a little bit further to what a typical transaction would look like on the medical health platform. Let's say you had a fellow named John and he's got a medical concern that needs some speedy guidance on how to approach his issue. John uses the medical health cross device web portal to find a physician who can help. He can find one that suits him based on their ratings, prices, availability, and specialization. John then makes his choice and reaches out to said physician. The physician obtains access by John giving his consent to view John's medical information anonymously through a secure decentralized data repository and comments on it through Medico Health's application. The physician's license can be checked through a regularly updated immutable database linked to a licensing authority. Physicians can be compensated for their comments with the token that powers the whole medical health network. So far as the actual roadmap goes for medical health, this is where they're come from and this is where they're off to. In 2015, the folks over at Medico Health identified the major issues in the healthcare market and also acquired their seed capital. By 2016, they did a bunch of their research and continued on partnering with different institutions and moving on to the beta testing stage of their core technologies. In 2017, they selected their core team, they developed their go-to-market strategy, and also established their referral network. 2018 is when they really kicked into high gear. In the first quarter of 2018, they had the private pre-sale and the final testing. In quarter two, we had the finalization of the white paper, whitelisting, and also the development proof of concept with selected encryption features and local storage. Pressing on to quarter three, we have the implementation and testing of decentralized storage and key exchange scalability tests with selected partners in selected countries. And to wrap up 2018, we have the pre-sale, the crowd sale, and then expansion of the actual platform itself. 2019, they're looking to build the payment module with tokens, physician identity module, and a range of other different bits and pieces on the actual backbone of the network. By 2020, they're looking to establish partnerships with hospitals using the actual platform, expanding into the Middle East and Africa, and also cooperation with different universities. And in 2021, they're looking to establish cooperations with clinical research trials, expanding into China and further into Asia. So far as the actual token distribution goes, here's how it breaks down. 
65% of the tokens will go in the crowd sale, 12% will go to the founders and the team, 7% to advisors and ambassadors, 6% to contributors, 6% to future partners, and 4% will go towards future development. And concerning the actual funds raised in the ICO sale, this is how they're going to be allocated. 50% will go towards research and development, 20% will be going to sales and marketing, 10% to general and administrative fees, 10% to operations and management costs, 5% for your legal and regulatory concerns, and an additional 5% will go towards security. Now I know that was quite a lot to take in, especially with an industry as complex as medicine, nothing's ever going to be that simple. That being said, what Medico Health hopes to achieve is a net positive for individuals who want to take better control of their health care while still seeking access to good medical treatment. Another huge benefit for doctors and patients alike, depending on the actual health issue, is they may not need to be in the same city, state, or even country. They can communicate across the world, and the patient can take full control over how much or how little information they wish to give. Now I for one will be keeping a very close eye on this project as I feel that even if it's a slow starter it has huge potential down the track, mainly as it has so many facets that will appeal to a great many people. For Crypto Global News, I'm Edward. Until next time, you take care.